And it does not appear that in this case it comports with anything that FBI agents with centuries of experience have told me they've never seen anything like this. And Director Comey, thanks for being here. Um, I was a bit astounded when you said the FBI is unable to control who a witness coming in voluntarily brings into an interview. Um, I've seen a lot of FBI agents tell people who could come in to an interview and who could not. And in this case, uh, and I'm sure you've, you've uh, heard some of the questions raised by uh, smart lawyers around the country about providing immunity to people like Cheryl Mills in return for her presenting a laptop that you had every authority to get a subpoena and if you had brought a, um, a uh, request for a search warrant based on what we now know, I would have had no problem signing that warrant so you could go get it anywhere you want. And in fact, I've talked to uh, former U.S. attorneys, AUSAs, who have said if an FBI agent came in and recommended that we give immunity to a witness to get her laptop that we could get with a subpoena or warrant, then I would ask the FBI not to ever allow this agent on a case. Can you explain succinctly why you chose to give immunity without a proffer of what was on the laptop, give immunity to Cheryl Mills while she was a, an important witness and you could have gotten her laptop with a warrant or subpoena? Sure, I'll give you my best shot. Uh, the immunity we're calling about here and the details really matter that we're talking about is act of production immunity, which says we want you to give us a thing we won't use anything we find on that thing directly against you, right? It's a fairly free well, And I understand that, and I understood that from reading the immunity deal. And that's what's so shocking, because she was working directly with Hillary Clinton, and therefore it's expected, since the evidence indicates she was pretty well copied on so many of the emails that Hillary Clinton was using, that uh, pretty much anything in there uh, would have been usable against her and, that's and you cleaned the slate before you ever knew now can I you know some of the transact some of the immunities you gave the last paragraph mentions a proffer was there a proffer of what the witness would say before the immunity deals were given to those that got those immunities can I answer first though your question about why I think it made sense to have active production immunity for the Cheryl Mills's laptop? Uh, I'd rather, my time is so okay. limited, right. please. It. Um, it's an important question, and, and I think there's a reasonable answer, but I'll give it another time. Uh, the, the, uh, I think in at least one of the cases, and I'm mixing up the guys, but with Mr. Cambetta, maybe also with Mr. Pagliano, no, I got that wrong. It's yes or no, did you have a proffer from them as to what they would say before you gave them immunity? I believe there was a proffer session governed by what I just referred to as called a queen for a day agreement with at least one of them to try and understand what they would say. But because the deals that I've seen back 30 years ago before I went to the bench, the FBI would say you and the DOJ, of course we know FBI can't give immunity, it has to come from DOJ, just like it's not the FBI's job to say what a reasonable prosecutor should do or not do. You give them the evidence and then you let them decide. But a proffer is made saying this is what my client will say, then the DOJ decides based on that proffer, here's the plea we'll offer, here's the immunity we'll offer, and if your client deviates from that proffer, the deal's off. You got really nothing substantial. It's as if you went into the investigation determined to give immunity to people instead of getting a warrant, you gave immunity to people that you would need to make a case if a case were going to be made. And I know we have people across the aisle that are saying, well, it's only because she's a presidential candidate. It happens to be, in my case, I wouldn't care whether she was a presidential candidate or not. What is important to maintaining a civilization with justice and fairness 
is a little righteousness where people are treated fairly across the board. And it does not appear that in this case it comports with anything that FBI agents with centuries of experience have told me they've never seen anything like this. So one other thing, I know this happened before your watch, but under Director Mueller, Kim Jensen, who prepared 700 pages of training material for those who would go undercover and try to embed with Al-Qaeda, it was wiped out because CARE and some of the people that were in unindicted co-conspirators named in your Holy Land Foundation trial, they said, we don't like them. They do not allow agents to know what Kim Jensen put in that 700 pages that was so accurate, so good about Islam, that we could embed people in Al-Qaeda and they wouldn't suspect them. I would encourage you to start training your FBI agents so whether they're in San Bernardino, Orlando, New Jersey, wherever, they can talk to a radicalized Islamist and determine whether they're radicalized. Without Kim Jensen's type material, you'll never be able to spot them again and we'll keep having people die. Uh, thank you. My time's expired. The time of the gentleman has expired.